I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not make to yourselves any idol or graven thing. Neither shall you erect pillars, nor set up a remarkable stone in your land to adore it. For I am the Lord your God. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today we are going to talk about St. Christina, who was the daughter of a man called Urbian, who was one of the judges of the area they lived. So you remember in the early church, a lot of the persecutions obviously took place under the emperors, but these executions were more directed by the judges below the emperor. So her father happened to be one of those judges. He was also obviously a pagan so really liked his idols, his statues of the gods. He had many of them. Now, St. Christina was a Christian. And so she took these statues and these idols and melted them down, broke them, because they were made of gold and silver and other precious metals. And she would melt them down and give the gold and the silver and whatnot to the poor. Naturally, dad was not very happy with this, and he used his power and his authority as judge to punish his own daughter by tortures. He whipped her with rods, or she ha he had her whipped with rods, and then thrown into a dungeon. She continued to persist in her Catholic belief, and so she was then torn with iron hooks, and racked while over a fire and was put on one of those wooden wheels uh, with a slow fire burning underneath. She was protected by this flame. The fire actually engulfed some of those who were watching. She then had an anchor tied around her neck and then was thrown into the lake of Bolsena. But she was miraculously saved by an angel. Now, we're not sure what happened after this. We just know that eventually her father died while she was still alive. So he had gone through all these different tortures and whatnot with her trying to get her to accept the heathen religion, the pagan religions. And he ended up actually dying before her. A new judge obviously took over after her father passed and continued and renewed the tortures that her own father was using on St. Christina. She was thrown into a furnace and was in there for five days without suffering any harm. She was then thrown among a bunch of serpents and snakes, and though some of them did bite her, the venom never harmed her at all either. So it's kind of like St. Paul, if you don't know the story of St. Paul, when he was on his travel to Rome, they stopped on an island. They were actually shipwrecked on an island. And they were with the natives at a fire, and a snake came out of the fire and bit St. Paul, and he just shook it off, and it fell in the fire, and it died. And all the natives and the locals were watching, waiting to see when he would start getting his fever and when he would eventually die, and he never did. So this kind of similar situation seemed to happen to St. Christina. Finally, in frustration by the judge, he cut out her tongue and then had her shot with arrows. Now, we've mentioned this before that some of the martyrs seem to go through a lot and are protected by God a lot, and then they end up dying. So we kind of want wonder why would God protect them from so many different tortures and then allow him to die in the end anyway. So the main idea would be that the that God is using the fact that his servants are being protected as a means to draw people to him. Look, this I am protecting my own. These other people are obviously worshiping the true God or at least protected by God. So why don't we go and join them? That's the general idea. It's not so much as to protect the person, the martyr who's being tortured, but rather to try to bring the torturers or at least the mere onlookers to accept Christ and to follow Christ. 
So she did die from the arrow wounds, which took place on in the city of Tiro, which was an island in the lake of Bolsina, though that island now no longer exists. The lake has engulfed it. So from the life of St. Christina, let us be willing to suffer all we can for Christ. We obviously, at least at this point, none of us are coming to the point where we're going to be executed or tortured by the authorities or anything like that. But let us make these small sacrifices in imitation to a degree of St. Christina and offer them for the conversion of sinners. Tomorrow is the Feast of St. James the Great, one of the apostles, one of the two James who were apostles. He will, in fact, be the first apostle to be martyred and owns that special title of Morslayer, and we will look at why that is tomorrow. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. Christina, pray for us.